Super High On Air. I'm Guy Sinclair. And I'm Bev Watson. Today's episode of Baha'i On Air will feature extracts from the concert at the Altair Centre featuring Baha'i artist Kevin Locke. Kevin Locke is a member of the native North American Lakota tribe. He uses his indigenous dances and songs to educate and entertain. Kevin travels all around the globe presenting his wonderful blend of humour, colour, hoop dance and flute songs. He's been to New Zealand many times and has performed at the WOMAD Festival in Auckland. He combines native myths and legends and Baha'i principles to examine important moral issues like the oneness of humankind and care for the environment. By sharing his culture, he is also teaching tolerance and appreciation for all peoples. The Baha'i faith actively promotes moral development and education, hoping that by learning to live together with respect and love, we can create the social and spiritual environment in which world peace can emerge. We hope you enjoy Kevin Locke's Auckland concert. you all. Well, I'll say it in our own language. We say, Mitakepi, Yuha Chawashten, Apech Yuzapi. That's uh, kind of a short greeting. Uh, it means uh, my relatives, uh, to each and all, I give you, I extend a warm, heartfelt handshake. And I do indeed hope that you're all happy. In fact, uh, if I could uh, prevail upon you at this time, on this side over here, we're going to see how happy you are by the volume with which you repeat this word. All right, you ready? So if you're happy over here, don't hold back. Repeat after me, say, Ata Kili! Ata All right, that's good. There, okay, good. If you all are happy over on this side, repeat after me, don't hold back, say, Ki Ora! That means everybody's happy. Yeah, let me just translate, you all know, Ki Ora Ata Kili means, Totally awesome. <laughs> so, uh, this is a song. It's uh, one of our traditional songs. It says it's, it's made by a leader from our community. His name was Tatanki uh, Otaki for Sitting Bull. And in this song, he says, uh, My relatives, my relatives, Mitaki Fi. He says, uh, He says, My relatives, take courage, be strong. Then he says, I walk this road with you, but I cannot continue. You must go forward. You must be strong. You must go forward. So it's a song of encouragement from our ancestors, and I feel them uh, here among us. The word for coffee is Makade uh, Mashkiki Wabu. And don't ask for decaf. <laughs> and uh, the Santi people say Kejuta uh, Sapa. That's their word for coffee. And the Ogallala word for coffee is Wakayapi. The Crow Indians out in Montana, their word for coffee is Bili uh, Shpira. Then where, where we live, where we uh, reside in Wakapala, South Dakota, we say Nescafe. <laughs> a ways to say that. Anyway, um, I would like to uh, demonstrate uh, sign language. Now that you heard how diverse these languages sound, you can easily see why they had to create this uh, universal language. And of course, we're faced with the same dilemma today. We need to create an auxiliary language so that we can all more appreciate and relish our one human family. Oh God. Guide me, protect me, illumine and lamp my heart, and make me a brilliant star. Thou art the mighty and the powerful. Okay, so I'm going to uh, dedicate a song to all of us here. 
that you may be unrestrained as the wind.
like to dedicate another song. You know, uh, we had a lot of beautiful quotations. And it's very clear that we, uh, we really have to focus on the young people because they are the, really the ones. You know, we've heard so many things about how the empowerment of women will, will uplift all of society because, you know, they're the first educators of the next generation. And you know, in South Dakota, we have a little expression, I'll tell you. They say, uh, better to build children than repair adults. <laughs> say it's good I mean it's logical because naturally we know that if you have limited resources you have to prioritize so where are you going to put your priorities you have to you have to you have to raise up the next generation we have to do that and indigenous people throughout the world are basically child-centered people it's child-centered societies it's that way and I'm sure the world will become this way but what about the adults this is what I'm very problematic I'm worried about it and really what the only answer is that we have to undergo a transformation. And really the only way that we can undergo this transformation is to connect ourselves, to connect ourselves with this great ocean. This great ocean surging today, the, re the ocean of the revelation. You know, every day, uh, uh, I say this prayer, I'm trying to say it, a lot of you know it. And the first line of which we ask that our prayer could be a light that would lead us to the ocean of the presence of God. You know what I'm talking about, a lot of you do. And I thought one time I was out in uh, Yap Island here. So maybe some of you are from near there. And I it was out there in the middle of the ocean. And I thought to myself, what on earth have, have I been asking for? Way we live over 2,000 kilometers from the nearest ocean where we live in the center of the continent. And I had no idea what the ocean was. And I wonder what in the world have I been asking for? I can see the ocean, the power of the ocean. And Baha'u'llah says, this is the day in which this world is being immersed in an ocean of bounty, ocean of forgiveness, ocean of utterance, ocean of light, ocean of knowledge. Everything likened to this day is like a great ocean. So I wonder, I really don't know what this ocean is, but you in this room know what the ocean is. You know this very well. So I'd like to dedicate this uh, song to all of you wonderful people here and to our ability to transform, to arise, to meet the, uh, the day to achieve great things today. So I'll, I'll put a little twist on this song, but I hope you'll recognize it.
Her name is Akimimila, uh, and Akimimila is a type of a creature, I'll mention it starts out in life as a caterpillar, and then it goes into a cocoon stage and it transforms, and it appears as it metamorphosizes, and it comes out as a butterfly. No, Akimimila. Okay. <laughs> Anyway, so she's going to float like that and dedicate it to all of the young people here who I'm sure will appear as beautiful butterflies. <laughs> And I've got uh, 28 hoops here. And as you, some of you in the front can observe, they're, they're in uh, four colors. There's black, red, yellow, and white. And uh, these represent, as we mentioned earlier, this paradigm of fours that we can observe out in the creation. The four winds, the four directions, and so forth. Also, the uh, diverse kindreds of humanity, whom in the Lakota language say, Oyate Tachangaleshka, hoops of people to represent <laughs> unity within the various kindreds. So now is the day, of course, when all these kindreds are coming together. We can see you out here tonight. And so I'd like to celebrate this at this time with this particular dance, which is a vision dance. In this dance, we create designs that portray the uh, <coughs> transformational aspects of the spring. As we go through this dance, you're going to see designs representing the sun and the moon, flowers, trees, birds, butterflies, different kinds of animals. We'll make the mountains, we'll make the clouds, the rainbows, the lightning, the stars. And as we do so, we'll be adding hoops. We'll be starting maybe with one, going up towards 28. And when we get up towards that number there, you'll, you'll see a design that's going to represent the eagle, us. Because all the designs are us. Because as we know, we are the stars shining from heaven of understanding. We are all these beautiful things. We are the ones that have to bring this world to life.
And tonight we celebrated the beautiful gifts for each of our distinctive kindreds. You know, it really is going to enhance and fulfill and also vindicate, vindicate and redeem our ancestors' sacrifice will be when we can make these contributions towards the global civilization that transcends all boundaries. Like this design here goes beyond the square, the bauxitis, the barriers of race or culture, which is good, but it can be trapped in a prison of tradition also. Or maybe geography or politics or worldview. We have so many barriers, but no. In this design, we're all in a circle. In a circle, there's no, there's no square. There's no corner to hide in. There's no remote part of the ocean where you can be and left up. There's no back road. And here, there's no third or second road. Baha'u'llah has drawn the circle of unity. We're all invited to winter, front row. We're there, we're standing shoulder to shoulder. That this is a vital ingredient in this beautiful design that we all must walk. And as we walk, in a beautiful design together, we'll help each other so we can indeed move towards our destination new horizon on the ocean of bounty. As we do that, when we encounter a barrier to the transformational power of the revelation of Baha'u'llah, we shall overcome. And we'll do that by crossing a bridge together. But today, we can realize the connection as, they, as Christ promised, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We can be that connection, that stairway. We'll bring heaven down to earth. We will exalt this earth to paradise. And as we make that journey together, then that in itself will ennoble us will enable us to soar on these beautiful eagle wings. Beautiful eagle wings we all have. And as we do so, as we soar together, then together also, we can realize and become a part of ever more beautiful, ever more dynamic, ever more wonderful patterns of unity that will carry us ever onward. May the sweet perfume diffused from this wonderful gathering and from the wonderful friends here throughout all this region. I really enjoyed that. It was great seeing so many Baha'is from so many backgrounds all working for world peace and world unity. It really shows the true power of religion to transform human hearts and so eliminate racism and prejudice. In fact, Baha'is believe that racism degrades both the perpetrator and the victim, that it degrades the human dignity of both. Baha'is believe that racism cannot be allowed to exist under any circumstances. If you'd like to learn more about the Baha'i faith and our teachings on unity, please ring 0800 224247 or 0800-BAHAIS and remember to tune in again next time to Baha'is On Air. Thanks for joining us. See you next week. Goodbye.